I would say that once a decade or so, astronomers discover a new type of mysterious event. Uh, for example, in the history of astronomy, pulsars were an unexpected mystery, gamma ray bursts were a mysterious surprise, and so on. In Space Watch, astronomers say they've been receiving radio signals from a distant galaxy. Scientists with Canada's CHIME Observatory say one of their telescopes picked up 13 bursts of fast radio waves, known as FRBs. The signals came from a source 1.5 billion light years away. The cause and precise origin of the radio waves is still unknown. A similar event has only been recorded once before. An extremely new signal reported by the BBC in January of 2019. According to their news report, astronomers detected mysterious signals from a distant galaxy. These mysterious signals were picked up in Canada by a super strong telescope. But the problem is, nobody knows the origin or the nature of these mysterious radio wave blasts. There were exactly 13 quick radial bursts, known in the industry as FRBs, or fast radio bursts. And the 21st century mysterious surprise is the fast radio burst, uh, which is uh, some sort of very energetic event that happens uh, at a great distance that we observe here on Earth as a brief pulse of radio waves coming from very far away. Um, fast radio bursts are a really exciting mystery. Uh, we basically don't, we have more ideas of what they could be than we have actual detected fast radio bursts. So why are fast radio bursts important? Well, as an astronomical phenomenon, they are not very well understood. We think that they're coming from a population of compact stars, things that are able to produce high, large amounts of energy on a short period of time. So these bursts are very, very brief flashes of radio waves. They're very bright compared to other radio sources. They come and go within a few milliseconds from random locations on the sky. And because they they're very short-lived. You have to have telescopes collecting data very rapidly in time. And each burst was coming from the exact same source. How far away was this source? It was roughly one and a half billion light years away from Earth. This is one of those events that only happens once in a blue moon. In fact, this exact type of incident has only happened one previous time, captured by another telescope. This group of bursts was captured at the Chime Observatory in British Columbia. So the, the Chime telescope doesn't look like you might expect a telescope to look like. Uh, it has, the physical telescope has no moving parts. It has these cylinders that are 20 meters wide and 100 meters long, so the collecting area is huge. That's one of the great benefits we have. The cylindrical design of Chime means that we see a stripe on the sky. And as the Earth rotates, that stripe sweeps out the whole sky every uh, 24 hours. I think we're doing something really new with Chime, which is figuring out how to scale the computations that are needed to do radio astronomy up to unprecedented volume. Um, the fast radio burst search that we wrote here at Perimeter Institute is something like a few hundred times larger than the searches that have been done to date. We have, for example, the highest uh, discovery rate for fast radio bursts of any telescope, but we get it by generating an avalanche of data. Uh, we have about a hundred times more data than a typical radio telescope, and uh, the computational challenges are immense. And also sampling the radio spectrum, so you end up with huge amounts of data to look for these signals. Uh, and it becomes a data processing and analysis challenge where you have so many what we, what we would call candidate events. And so what, what we find is with humans, um, you quickly get overwhelmed with looking at these, uh, these data. So you need to deploy artificial intelligence. Uh, and that's, that's where these guys have come in and uh, made really impressive headways into this, this problem and solved it, I should say. So this was a huge challenge and one that hasn't really been attempted before, a real-time streaming fast radio burst detection system. And so it's really um, a pathfinder or a, um, a leader in this area. In the Chime fast radio burst system, we look at every bit of data once and a second later it's gone. Uh, so building this system was a real challenge and a real uh, different sort of uh, software beast. The students wrote some code that makes these diagnostic plots in a, makes it in a uniform way that's independent of where, which telescope it's coming from and so on. 
these fast radio bursts are the, the primary problem is that these are really hard to find and that's why in the past 10 years only around 100 have been seen. Very early on we realized that we need something which can automatically do this job for us. And not just, not just do this job for us, but do it as good as a human would do. Because we really don't want to miss these bursts. So in the Green Bank experiment, for instance, that's allowed us to operate in an environment where we would otherwise get thousands of pulses to look through per day, just down to one or two. And so it just makes the whole experiment doable. Otherwise, all you'd be doing is just sitting there 24-7 just looking at these plots. And this is what we like to do as, as astronomers, that we would like to figure out what exactly are the physical processes behind this, what all things can you probe with these objects, rather than actually just sitting and trying to find these objects. It's such a massive improvement, you're able to go through so much data and make so many more new discoveries and um, write proposals that are like, hey, we need more data because we've gone through it all now, and that's awesome. Throughout the first a uh, few weeks of our FRB search, we were finding fast radio bursts at the rate of one, one FRB every two days or so. Uh, that's actually a really impressive number since the total number that were ever found since the initial discovery in 2007 is around 50. In the first few weeks of our search, we found a new repeating FRB. Prior to that, the situation was that about 50 fast radio bursts, bursts had been observed ever and one of them was a repeating fast radio burst. The other 49 had not been observed to repeat, despite a lot of telescope time spent looking, and that was a real mystery. Uh, so what we've shown is by discovering a second FRB, is that the repeating FRB. It's something which we don't know about, right? Like, we, we have seen so few of them that we don't really understand what, what astrophysical process is causing these amazing bursts. And they are so far off in the universe, they are not within our galaxy. Just the fact that we don't know what's causing them just generates this curiosity that, hey, I need to figure out what's happening. I need to figure out what physical process is causing these objects. So with these two new papers, what the Chime Fast Radio Burst collaboration has shown is that, well, a few things. Uh, the Chime FRB instrument works <laughs> and we're finding fast radio bursts. Uh, the 13 we report in this paper uh, were found during our kind of pre-commissioning phase when we were basically turning the system on for the first time and determining whether it worked or not. It's very interesting that it really is one of the most powerful radio telescopes in the world and uh, we've made it work through uh, new software and new computing techniques that were really developed here in Canada for the project and uh, so it's very exciting that Canada is really leading the world um, in this um, particular part of astronomy.